Let's talk about tensors, why they're used, how to use them in TensorFlow, as well as an example that's in the real world with audio signals. So after installing TensorFlow here, we create our first tensor using tf.constant, but what exactly is a tensor? How, how would you describe, how would I describe it? It's a way to store information in kind of an ordered rectangular format that in, in mathematical terms, it's a multi-dimensional matrix. That's kind of how I think of it. But really a tensor can be anything. It can be a scalar, a vector, a matrix. And in TensorFlow, if you want your tensor to stay constant, you do tf.constant. So this tensor is not able to change itself. So if I wanted to do if I wanted to change the element of uh, change an element of this vector, it would not allow me to do so because it's tf.constant. You need tf.variable for that. But you can also, as you declare tf.constant, you can specify it as the, the, the certain type of tensor, of the item in the tensor as well. So this is a float base 16 tensor as well. And we'll see that different float type 16 versus 32 bit can perform differently on GPUs. So it's important to know that. And you do dot n dimensions. This is a two dimensional tensor. In this case, that's just a matrix. And I'm just probably gonna call it a matrix. But when we get to uh, when we get to high level dimension, higher tensors, such as this three by three, you can see it says, you can sh give it a shape, it's three by two by three. So it's a three by two matrix stacked three times. That is a three dimensional tensor at that point. And with a dimension of three. As you can see here, number dimension, shape, and data type. Now, if you want to change the contents of your tensor, you have to do variables. So in a machine learning context, tf.variable would probably make sense, make most sense for the weights and biases of your model as well as possible activations. So storing them in a matrix as each store each layer as its own matrix and then store, store as a vector and then store all of them in a matrix. If you want something such as a certain filter to be applied in computer vision or audio signals, you want that filter to stay the same, you would use tf.constant. But if you don't know what to use, just use tf.constant. Uh, that's kind of how I would see that. So as you can see here, you can assign it. You do have to do dot assign as well. You can't just do dot equals because it's TensorFlow, but uh, you do tensors right there. And if you want to initialize a random tensors, you have different variables, different ways to do it, such as a uniform distribution or a normal distribution. A normal distribution has that bell curve. Uniform is more uniform. And you can tell it what shape you want as well. And this is really something uh, you can do it for randomly initializing your weights right here. So that's why I called them weights. So in a model, or instead of randomly initializing them, you can, you can input the weights from some other model and do transfer learning. And in that case, you would still, in that case, that would just be tf.variable. It would not be that, but that's a cool way to initialize right here. And then shuffling a tensor, that is just doing dot shuffle. If you want to create a tensor, if you want to create a tensor with the same value, you can do tf.1s, tf.0s. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. And uh, you might also ask, What's the difference between using a tensor and a NumPy array? Since TensorFlow uses both, you can use both for training neural networks. The difference is tensors run much faster on GPUs. That's the most, that's the big difference. But if you go to runtime right here, change run type, and you know, Colab provides you TPU, GPU, but when you're training your model, especially on very large data sets, especially running on high, high resolution images, you're gonna to want to put it into a you're gonna put it into a ten data set actually, which is a data set, a TensorFlow data set is composed of tensors as well. So let's actually look this up. TensorFlow data set. And you can see here, like as you load in certain things, it, it's gonna be loaded in as a tensor. So uh, you can, yeah. So this is how you index a tensor the same same way you do with Python lists. And here's some just different ways to do it. If you want to add an extra dimension to a tensor, such as the alpha or uh, or some other parameter for imaging, for example, you can do rank three tensor. If we define this rank two tensor somewhere else, 
Uh, we can include all the previous uh, dimensions using dot 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 and you can do tf dot new axis right here. Some cool operations you can do with tensors, you can add them, you can subtract them, you can add, well, this is actually, you can add, subtract by other tensors as well as um, just scalar values, as you can see here. You can divide it by 10, which is probably useful if you're gonna be normalizing or scaling your, um, actually gonna be scaling your data. You wanna, if you have very large numbers, you kinda wanna scale it between zero, one, negative one, one, just so that the model doesn't, um, just it's it's better, it can better work with the data that doesn't associate super high values or super low values with anything, any kind of pattern that it doesn't need. Um, yeah. You can also do matrix multiplication. This is uh, how you get the dot, well, actually the dot product, a dot product is matrix multiplication. This is how you get the dot product that determines your decision boundaries and classification, as well as um, other things in regression, but mostly classification there. You need to multiply matrices. You do tf.math.multiply, you can do tf.mathmul, or alternatively, you can do tensor at tensor. This is actually a one that I really did not know. But TensorFlow has these two different uh, methods that you can use for multiplying them. And you can also just multiply them here. And you will see that it says matrix size incompatible. So why is this incompatible? Well, let's let's actually look at what let's actually look at what let's actually look at what tensor is whoa so tensor is a three by two by three and what I'm doing here is I'm basically just squaring it uh, but I kind of made the mistake well you can't actually square because this is not a square tensor you can't actually square it you need to multiply it you need to have the multiply so the inner dimensions match. And what that means is that this three by two by three by three by two by three, uh, three by three by three down here, it should this should be changed to where the second one is two by three by three. Because you want this, th these, the three and the two basically need to be swapped in order for this matrix multiplication to work. And that's exactly what I did here. I did reshape three by, uh, that's why I, I changed it up a little bit. And I did that like so. You can also transpose the matrix as when you do the dot product, you basically just transpose it. And yeah, you can just multiply here. TensorFlow dot dot actually gives you the dot product. Well, it, technically not the dot product, it's the outer product or the Hadamard product. What this does is it allows you to, multi to get all the multiple values, but put it in a vector and store them and not have to not add them because once you add them you can't really get them back so it's just another way to do it but you can add up all these elements as well to get the actual dot product and there are different types of tensors and just defining your types in them is very important because GPUs and TPUs run much faster on 16-bit flow as opposed to the 32-bit flow this is because 16-bit flow has half the amount of memory you need to store if it kind of makes sense and so that that might not matter for small data sets but if you're doing really big data sets or you're doing pretty complicated data this is something that's really important to analyze and to remember especially as you scale up so you just basically do d type equals tf dot float or you can just do float 16 and it's important to note that NumPy uses 64-bit floats by default. TensorFlow uses 32 bits. Uh, in most in most applications, I don't know this probably won't matter as much. But if you want more faster performance, or if you if your Colab notebook is crashing, maybe try reducing the bits. And yeah, so getting values from tensors, you can. This reduce mean function, what it allows you to do is get the average. You can also do reduce min, max, but reduce mean, what this reduce means is reduce down a certain row or column of this. So this is a two by two matrix. This is just a grid. So it'll add up all the, all the elements in a row or a column, and it'll give you the averages for each of them in an output tensor. So this is actually, uh, the tensor we made is actually a three-dimensional tensor, not two-dimensional. So that's going to be for each, 
so if it's axis equals zero, that's gonna be the rows, if I'm not mistaken. So it's gonna go through each row and it'll get six of them. I'll put it here and this is the average among the six rows because it's, it's two rows three times. That's what gives you six. And if you wanna do some uh, statistics here, you can do standard deviation. Uh, make sure to also cast it, do tensorflow.cast as a float. You cannot do standard deviation on int for some reason. Uh, but you can do variance on the tensor as well, and that just gives you the variance. Uh, and tensorflow.argmax is the same thing as nnumpy.argmax as well. Argmax gives you the index of the largest element. That's what max means. That's the the index of the element, the maximum element, and the arg means argument it means index. So index of the max. And tensorflow.reduce max. Uh, I didn't I didn't specify the axis there, but don't worry about that. And so uh, squeezing a tensor. So what this does is it kind of combines. It combines the tensor and removes all single dimensions, which is just a dimension with zero items in it, but is still there. So as you can see, this um, this is a what? Its shape it's a fifty dimensional. It has fifty here, but the it only has in the la in one dimension here. It has all these that are blank. So it feels like we could just lower the dimension. You know, dimensionality reduction is a huge part of machine learning. So, you know, you just do tensorflow.squeeze and then this squeezes down the tensor. Now to show you an example. So this is all just importing audio, don't worry about that. Uh, what you what is really cool is that if you do if you see audio dot oh, we see squeeze as well. Uh, if you do audio dot decode wave, so it's gonna decode the binary. I uh, got this from this TensorFlow tutorial right here. And but this TensorFlow tutorial is a simple audio recognition. And uh, another thing is get waveform label tensorflow.il.read file. If you hover over this method, this operation returns a tensor. So tensors are heavily used in TensorFlow. I mean, the name TensorFlow comes from information and data flowing between tensors. Why else do you think it's called TensorFlow? And as you can see here, these are different audio waveforms. Um, and these, they're kind of encoded as values here over time. So it's a time series. And so if you actually look at the audio itself, this is a tensor right here. It has 1600 values. And each of these is going to be, I'm guessing this is going to be the pitch or the, yeah, this is gonna be the pitch of the audio or volume. Uh, but whatever it is, it's a tensor right here. And this is a squeezed tensor because we did tensorflow.squeeze. So the input and it's axis equals negative one, so it squeezed it from the last axis. And after squeezing that, it puts that together like so. But yeah, that's been the video so far. If you enjoyed it, watch my other machine learning videos and I thought, hope you think this was cool. This was a really good crash course on tensors. Now go do something useful with it. Goodbye.